I am gonna use rope eventually in this class, but I love purple span sets. They're the smaller version of span sets. And they break if you just pull them straight at 84 kilonewtons. So if you girth hitch them, put knots in them, or do anything to them, you're going to lose 50% strength, which is still stronger than a steel carabiner. So it doesn't matter. So you can do anything you want with these things and they're very light. So I'm going to first wrap um, my sofa here. I have a couple options. Can everybody hear me okay when I'm this far away? Cool. Um, there are rocks like this where you can go under and come over the top. If you can rig a slack line around a tree, you can rig a span set around a rock. It's not rocket science. In this case, I would probably put the, the wrap, the girth right up here to get my uh, high line anchor higher. In some cases that's preferred, but if my edge is over here, I might wanna just keep the whole thing low and then lift it up with my backpack when it's near the edge. And of course, when you secure the thing near, uh, if you're gonna have your backpack near a clip edge, you're gonna make sure all of that's clipped in so nothing falls off. So let's call this anchor number one. Um, we take this tree right here is anchor number two, or this would be a bush. Because if I had a tree, I probably would just use the tree. Um, I'm going to avoid a rabbit hole there. This is a, a medium strong tree you don't want to rig 100% of your high line on. So there's number two. And then, um, all of my ropes are 10 meters long and it works for at least the rigging in Yosemite. Even in Moab where the anchors are pretty far back from the edge, you can still use this and just extend it with the purple span set. So this is basically two shitty things that we're gonna equalize off of. And we're gonna keep it super basic. Just like tie a knot in your harness, all we're gonna do here is eights, okay? So I'm gonna go around this side. Am I still in this shot? Here. Come, come join me over here, guys. Cool. So, let's see here. Just like you tie into a harness. There are so many ways to skin this cat, okay? We're just gonna skin the cat this way. Um, for the people that have just joined, you will eventually rig an anchor for us. If you want to start rigging right now while watching, then you can be pinned in the video and talk, and I would mute myself and you would demonstrate what you built and why. And then in the chat, we will um, give our ideas about it. So, um, and if you have questions or if I am not doing it efficiently, tell me. Everything's a discussion here because there's so many ways to do this. So in this case, I'm just gonna do this again. Tie that. So now the problem is I've got all this rope, okay? So let's have you go back to where you were. Now where do I want my master point? I have point number one here, point number two here, you know, to make this more interesting, I'm going to go back to Fun fact, if you like numbers, when I was pitching this, I made it 40 kilonewtons strong. Did you know that doesn't matter? 
but it is interesting to know. Now you have to go back even further. When you're building an anchor, you want the master point, the web block, the webbing to be past the edge by a couple inches. You don't want it to be way past the edge to where you can't tie in, but you don't want the webbing tight where it can rub a rock edge. So we're gonna keep that in mind. I still have too much rope here. So what I'm going to do, fold it over twice. And I essentially did a BFK by just folding it over um, twice. Kind of like you tie a frost knot when you're using a frost knot on your backup webbing. So now I have three very independent points. Um, and if these were bolts, or if this was all natural rigging like we have here, the process is the same. Don't troll me. <laughs> I'm going to use aluminum carabiners here. If I was to be a good example, I would use steel or quick links but you also have to cyclic load these above four kilonewtons for it to be a problem. And if you're dispersing it over three points and using two carabiners each, it's, you, you shouldn't use aluminum carabiners, but I'm gonna use it for the same thing. So. Opposing and opposite on all of my points. So I have redundancy at this part too. Keep in mind a span set. That actually reduces the strength of the carabiner because it's pulling on the gate side and the spine side. Whereas a rope pulls more on the spine. Take, take that into consideration. That's why I'm going to use two. So, and opposing. I'm going to lift my laptop up and show you all the points closer up once I'm done. And then we will have the next person who's ready show us their anchor. This is too long. So now that I have three points, I'm going to treat them like they're three bolts, just like you would if you were doing a BFK on three bolts. Um, so let's just see how much room I have. Side, see what you count. They prefer to do tensionless hitch when tying a rope around things. Um, I'll do just do munters. I just, I compensate where the, the length and distance is on my BFKs. My ten tensionless hitches are for some things. More for stabilizers when I have a rock here and I pull it down in order to keep the master point from moving. If your BFK is moving a lot, you're gonna cut through it. Kind of like one of our last videos where Alonzo had his main line, his high line fail. Okay. Aren't YouTube videos so much better? I edit all this part out. <laughs> so, we good here? I'm gonna pin, let me pin myself for crying out loud. There we go. So we got the kitchen table, sofa, and that. And right now I have no tension on this, so I'm going to just keep playing with it. The sofa moves, so that's a bad example. Ooh, I wanted to bring up the size of my sofa. Size 
is not as important than how you use it. If you're pulling that down a hill, you're going to die. But if you're pulling it up, if that's a boulder behind another boulder and you're pulling it up, you're not gonna lift the rock up and how half buried it is or attached to something else, whether or not that's a big enough rock, okay? So the thing is, in my, in the, and I love tailless BFKs. I don't join the two ends of my rope with a fisherman's knot. I let the BFK do all the work. This side over here comes around and this side over here comes around. So everything, sorry, put that in there. This guy's here and the rest of it's on this side. So as I tie my knot, I have this much tail left. I just do an overhand. I don't do a figure eight. It really doesn't matter. One's not stronger than another. One's not better than another. So it depends on how this is gonna get pulled up and down. Um, they're not too wide. It is wide, but you're talking about things being pretty strong here. So even if that is more than 50% of the force and it's 70% of the highlight, it just doesn't matter. And then you can attach your web lock or your soft release. You just put your soft shackle in here and attach what you need to. I have my stuff, but I really want to focus on this. I don't think this is magical. And if you're a climber um, and you want to get into highlighting, it's not, not much more than this. And if you know how to attach a slack line in the park, practice using the web lock upside down in the park. Because if I'm going to be above it, I want that web lock upside down so the tail is coming up because that's how I will be tensioning it. If you're at this height, let's say a hang frame or rigging off of a tree or whatever, you put that web lock normal because you'll be pulling the tail down and back just like you do in the park. There's no magic besides just knowing how to tie a VFK kind of equalize. Um, does anybody have questions about what I just did here? Because in theory, this is a complicated anchor, but this is so bomber because so much stuff has to fail before this would uh, kill you. So does anybody have an anchor they want to show? Build Put it in the quick. chat. So, who's talking? Oh, sorry, I could build one real quick. I was watching you while I was doing that. Yeah, Give me no just a second, problem. I might build one. Hey, um, uh, I, I don't have like ropes to really play with, but can I just like reiterate what I'm hearing and see if it, it comes out right? Totally. Uh, so you have three points. You, I mean, you're just doing natural right now, so you just girth hitch it on a bunch of stuff where you can go into a bolt, and then you put a beaner at the end, and then you run your three pieces of line through those beaners, then you just equalize it and tie BFK, that's it? Yeah, and, and, and it comes down to location mm -hmm. because every spot's different. Mm -hmm. um, something that's so annoying is when this is sticking out a full meter away from the edge because everything you do, you're hanging out past it. So, uh, but you also don't want it to rub. Mm -hmm. And uh, if your bolts are lower and you're coming up or they're higher and you're rigging a vertical anchor. So um, stabilizing this is basically where the art comes in. Okay. Kind of tail, uh, tailless BFK. And of course, I love having one tail super long because not everybody has a personal anchor on them when they're trying to go highlining. That's kind of annoying to have that on you, right? Throw a carabiner in this and you can go all the way to the sofa and be clipped in before you even approach the edge. Wow. So you have a community anchor, not a personal anchor. Um, all right, so until someone's ready, I'm gonna show you um, another thought. Um, they don't make these anymore, but they do have the Kingpin from Slacktivity. It's an aluminum bow shackle. Of course you can use steel, but I hate carrying heavy things, so. Um, 
I always use my soft release on the static side, the side without the web lock, because I can release it back to the side that's going to pull the webbing back in. Um, I do have quite a few videos on that, and it's just always been really enjoyable when we've done that outside. In this case, my loop, this part that's static, the part that won't move is right here. That's going to be on the anchor because as I release it, I don't want to have to undo anything in order to completely let it go. I just let it unravel and then the soft release drops on the cliff like it's still attached to my anchor. So um, I would go around my VFK. Let's pull you. So that's pretty. And then you can take another bow shackle and attach your webbing to that, your sewing loop. And then you are done with the static side. The backup does not go to the soft release. The backup goes directly into here. So you're backing this up. You just want to bypass it. You just want to have redundancy and everything. Um, a rabbit hole I'll go down is I put uh, soft shackles in here. And even on this side, it will be rubbing, but it rubs, it moves so little because the inside is rotating significantly less than the outside when you're releasing it. And in the context of this, I have um, a tagline holding the majority of the weight within a meter. I'm not releasing very much like you would in a park with a super long soft release where it really builds up heat. So you can break certain rules if you know why that. So uh, this would be my static side. Otherwise, you just put the web lock in. In this case, I'll do it upside down. And then for my backup, if you're using a frost knot, or a padded frost knot. For most webbings, that's just fine. I can't think of a situation I wouldn't be willing to do that in. If you're gonna rig a line for a festival or a kilometer long project, like take the extra couple ounces and just do it right. So then at the end of the day, you only have these two points within the BFK. So that's all an anchor is. After that, it's just like rigging in a park other than you're using a tagline which you don't normally use in a park. You can use a tagline in a park and just have your friends on one side, you on another, and you can practice pulling the webbing over because you, can, you should practice everything in the park that you can before you go out in order to minimize just the, comp the, the difficulty that you would have. So any questions? I might go into scorpion wraps if uh, Zach's not ready. How are you? Yeah, I think I'm ready. I'll show you. Okay. Let me move this around. I'm trying to build an anchor on my table here, and I don't have all the stuff you have. Let's see if I can actually show you. This is kind of weird. So I'm going to be telling you this is a span set, actually. This right That's here fine. is just like a little PAS. And obviously, these will be steel carabiners, right? And with those, will be steel. Would it be okay if this is basketed like this? Or is that just weird? That's technically fine. Yeah. Would you I mean, recommend course, it different way? The thinner the material you use, the more you want to pad it. Okay. Ob yeah, obviously I would pad that. I just don't have any padding with me. Yeah. Okay. But with span sets, I'm not as, you know, worried about padding. Um, mm -hmm. we, we'll, we'll discuss padding before the class is over. And then the second piece. I'll just go in and pretend like this is also a span set. I went ahead and girth hitched it just because of where it is in relation to my other two pieces. Yep. I'll pretend like that's steel. And then for this last one, I just used the end of the rope. Perfect. And then I brought that down and equalized that onto BFK and uh, another steel carabiner, we'll just say that. Perfect. And that carabiner could just be temporary while you're using it to clip like tagline or whatever. Yeah. but eventually that carabiner wouldn't exist. Is that a full length rope? Yeah, it's just the only actual like 
Perfect. To anchor. That's, a, that's a really good example of using part of a rope because sometimes you have to climb to get where you're going and then you're just recycling what you already have. It's really dumb to carry this after you have 60 meters of rope sitting there you're not using. Mm -hmm. So you would actually be okay with using dynamic climbing rope in this setup for a high line? Yeah, dynamics plenty strong and it's actually okay. probably going to equalize um, more automatically. Okay. It's just going to move a little bit more and you just have to pad your, your master point might stretch more. Okay. So things should be padded so good. It wouldn't matter. But if you're going to like have the option, obviously static rope is serve or abrasion resistant, but okay. Yeah. That's what I was about to ask. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I mean, in theory with enough paracord, you could rig a, a master point <laughs> just like eight times eight layers of it and you probably would be fine um let's talk about padding real quick i'm gonna hopefully not make you all motion sick here where would i pad this i'm not it depends on how sharp the edges are if i have a sharp edge back here i probably would um, maybe right here because this is going to see most of the pinching but just you don't just because the rope is touching the rock doesn't mean you have to pat it if it's moving like you really have to pat it um, especially span sets you have to consider what you're using if I'm trying to use super thin Dyneema or thinner ropes eight millimeter ropes are kind of thin to put on rocks these ropes that I have are Uh, let's see here, Dyneema Core Technora Sheath. So it's very abrasion resistant, but if you used a normal static rope, you'd really probably want to pad all of it. And at the end of the day, if you bring enough padding to pad every inch of a rope, you kind of should just bring a span set. Um, all the strength that comes in a span set is inside, and this is, this is just a really awesome thing I've learned to like. Um, it depends again on how sharp these points are. So uh, I, I was on half dome and we were just limited on what we could use. Like you can take your socks off and your shirt off and just start padding all sorts of things, put your shoe under things, but I, I, you only have so much. You really wanna be smart about where you're putting it. Um, Lauren asks, is it a problem for you to have only one strand instead of two tension rope strategy utilization on Zach's anchor. I guess on this part, if I can show you two two strands. In theory, you only get half the strength, but it's only one third of your anchor, and by itself, it's at least fifteen kilonewtons, more like nineteen. So one rope is not the end of the world. Um, you could loop it and instead of putting the end of the rope at the table, mm -hmm. it would be buried inside of the BFK if you really, really wanted that extra ump. Sometimes I have a super bummer thing here and I just back it up to this and I'm not so worried about this apocalyptic anchor, I call it. Whereas if everything fails, I would um just rely on this but like it's so unlikely i would like to talk about um let's do scorpion wraps and then i'll talk about how not to back up a tree so this is actually really stupid easy based on what we already have here um a scorpion wrap is well we'll do two different kinds here In this case, the girth itch is just on the back side, just like a scorpion tail, okay? That allows you to put something under here and allows it to get up a little bit higher. It gets, um, it, gets it up, because that's usually the, the biggest issue when you're wrapping a rock, is you just don't want it to be rubbing the ground. If I go around, 
the sofa. This is not long enough to go inside, so I'm just gonna add one. You can use a square quick link to add, but that's just a point of failure. And if I reduce the strength of my span set by girth hitching it, I don't, I don't really care. So now I would girth hitch inside and It's like more natural. Let's put you on the ground here. It's kind of like um, intuitive to wrap it like a tree. And then you have it down and it'll pinch down there. So what I'm going to do is put this on the back side and then flip the tail over the top. So let's take a let's take a tour here. Pin this. So it's just back here, or I can even scrunch it up even more, and then come up that way, and then it comes over the top like a scorpion. And that can help secure it. You have to be careful if your rock is shaped like a, like a bowling ball. In theory, it could squeeze up. If you did this on like a Teflon ball, it would slip off. So you have to figure out like, do you just put it under this lip, under the rock, or do you just have enough friction? Um, it's not likely to come undone. Uh, if you know the, e I think it's the EVGB knot, you can um, go like that to, change the length if you want. I could also change the girth hitch in the back to a basket, which would actually give me a lot more strength and reduce this length by half. There's a lot of options you can do with these span sets, but wrapping, uh, wrapping rocks is not super hard. Rigging all natural is not super hard. And if you just rig off cams, you're just basically, it's an equalization game. So even all natural rigging is not, um, rocket science. You just want everything to be um, independent and you want everything to be strong enough by itself to hold the high line up. If I'm on a bush that I would not trust by itself, then you uh, might be rigging with Andy. So <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying you want to avoid it if you can. So does anybody else have rope that they want to show off with? No, Jake, you don't got nothing. Brandon, you wanna you wanna equalize two legs of your uh, uh, chair? Well, I figured it's a perfect time to start tying knots in AM steel since we're rigging to small bushes now. <laughs> Is that AM steel? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some six mil. I I had some questions as to whether or not you would trust six mil on your on your Highline's main from a single point anchor. Say you've got bomber trees, say it's not a problem, and you're throwing up a 120 meter line, you know, as far as strength goes, and as far as protection goes, the numbers are there. <laughs> in like a whoopee situation or? In a whoopee situation. I would just use two. Yeah, one because main, one back up. You know, you're, you're likely to have enough to do two. And you don't clip. Here's the thing. Don't clip one to the main, the main to one, and the backup to the other. Put them both right. together. Otherwise, it's not a master point. Otherwise, you have a point and a point. Right, two individual. I see that all the time. Right. 
Yeah, so you come to like this one thing and then it comes off again. Yeah, make your eyes a little bigger points. so they can facilitate um, everything. Yeah, something that I've done before as well is if I am going around a tree and I only have my rope, which I've done this before. Let me see. I'm back here. So I will come around and let's say that's just where I want it. And I only have the one rope. I'm trying to keep it to a minimum. This is called a jumper. Tie another figure eight right there. Completely isolates it. Um, it's, I mean, this tail is technically kind of redundant, but then this point isn't. And if I want it to be really redundant, then I have what I, you know, I have it. Now I can go back through the tree again, around the tree. And figure out where I want my other one. And that's super independent and uh, redundant and bomber. And the thing is, you're just like strangling the tree with rope versus like a span set. So you just pat it, you stick some sticks behind it or whatever. Um, but I've, I've done that several times in order to create redundancy. Um, I don't think I put out this video yet, but I'm going to soon, where we had sliding X's with just climbing slings. Um, after we did the shock loading as a myth test, I wanted to do it on a high line. And so we have the snap shackle and we released um, one side while I was on the high line and shock loaded it because we're always so afraid of shock loading. And we have so much dynamic webbing in the system that it didn't create any more force than a whipper. So, um, of course, you're only on one bolt in that case because that was a two bolt scenario. But what I did wasn't try to avoid shock loading, but I used like three climbing slings, independent climbing slings, and then created that master point. So I had probably a hundred kilonewton anchor and redundancy and I just didn't try to do it with one sling so that was a really fun uh, experiment and test and idea to explore for two bolt anchors if we just wanted to rig off two bolts any other questions any sketchy sketchy monkey knot uh, anchors oh where the knots in the rock yeah, yeah. okay so um, this, I think this weekend, I hope we're going to take, um, soft shackles and stick it in my cam crusher, uh, adapter that's shaped like this. And we're going to test, um, like if it's barely in there and then like, of course, like where it can't come out and see, cause that's funny. And I, I, I would do it. I mean, it would just, it would eat up your button knot on your soft shackle, but um, but it's a soft shackle. It does. That's not where the strength is. Yeah. If this thing was chewed up right here, it just makes it look cooler. You know, you don't look like a noob that way with shiny gear. So, it's slacker swag for sure. Yeah. Slacker swag. <laughs> so, um, plus, I mean, if you're making them, they're pretty cheap too. It's like, in my opinion, they could be disposable depending on the project. Oh, so uh, that's for tying the, uh, the knots on the soft shackles. And there's a, there's a big overhand method where you make two fixed brummels and then do the, do the overhand and slide them up against. Have you tested that strength or have any sort of... So that 45 that's a minute, really simple knot. That 45-minute video comes out in about two weeks. <laughs> um, oh, no way. Yeah. So I, I basically always have eight videos in the bank, and it's, like, hard for me not to get excited about sharing this stuff and let everybody live in two months in my past. So, but yes, the problem is it's huge. Right. It's just huge. You, one, you can't use it for an enob split. Like you can't use it in the middle of a high line. And then it requires more material because in order to get around the head, you have to be able to make the noose bigger, like that big to get around. And so you'd only have this much to work with to get it over. So you actually can't make them cute and small, which is kind of nice when you're keeping your web lock as close to home as possible on your anchor. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's an option. It depends where you want to use them. Maybe great for the backup soft shackle. So the backup soft shackle will be longer, the backup webbing. Right. But I also feel like the button knot is a good hazing process to, you know, if you can't make a button knot, you shouldn't highline. So. Welcome, welcome to the group kind of deal. But I did break test the ones we made in the video and they break, you know, just as normal as, you know, all of them. They always break, you know, on the, on the, on the back side. So, um, yeah. um, oh, before we end, I'm trying to, because I think it'll cut off here in a minute. Technora and Vectrin, 12 braid. I'm trying to fix what's not broken. I'm trying to make soft shackles out of these materials. They don't float in water, which is why sailors don't use them. And sailors are the only ones who really use soft shackles. But the melting point is three times higher on uh, one of these. And so we're gonna see if they're stronger and try to melt them. Like one's 900 degrees to, to melt through it. So it's just like really cool to have 12 braid fancy tech, you know, Technor. But yeah, so the class is probably gonna cut off. We only get 40 minutes. That's Zoom for you. Thank you everyone so much. This um, will be posted on YouTube uh, so that you can always go back and review the information. If, and if you have any questions about Highland rigging, um, you know, too, there's no such thing as too many questions. Like always know more than you think you should when going out to rig a Highland anchor. And Ryan Jenks is an awesome resource for that. It's going to cut us You're off. You're the best, Jenks. Here. You're the awesome. best. Dude, thanks, thanks so much guys. for doing what you do. I love it. Cool. Thank you. See you guys. Have a great day, man. You too.